Freeman's new Sidewinder 2 takes our original Sidewinder one step further with the ability to code cut as well as duplicate. Code cutting is accomplished with the addition of depth and space rods to control carriage positioning. Included with the machine is everything you need to duplicate almost any high security key in use today. Out of the box, the machine can code cut Volkswagen and Honda high security keys. Additional depth and space rods can be purchased separately. To begin, we'll examine everything that comes with the machine at time of purchase. In addition to the machine itself, you will find an instruction manual, warranty card, and coupon for a free copy of Genericode ME, Freeman's Code Retrieval Program. Be sure to fill in your warranty card and fill out the request for Genericode. This information can be mailed or faxed in. You will need to attach the feed handle to the machine prior to use. The handle simply screws into the top of the machine and controls the x-axis, which is the cutter depth. You should also find the Volkswagen and Audi depth and space rods in a separate bag with the machine. Inside the drawer you will find the following. Six cutters and three guides. These include three 30 seconds inch cutters for Lexus type keys that are cut up the center of the key, three millimeter for Volkswagen, Porsche, and Audi, and five 30 seconds, which cuts all externally cut keys such as Mercedes, BMW, Volvo, Honda, and the new GM high security keys. Two sets of vices are included with the machine. Typically machines are shipped with the AB vices mounted on the table and the Volkswagen vices are located in the drawer. Side A of the standard vices will be used for almost all keys. The B side of the standard vice holds Mercedes two-track keys. The Volkswagen vices hold Volkswagen, Porsche, and Audi keys. Also in the drawer are two Allen wrenches and a handheld tip stop. The 3 seconds Allen wrench is used to change depth and space rods on the machine. The 1 8 inch is used to change the cutter and guide. The handheld tip stop is used to gauge all tip stop keys. If any of the above items are not included with your machine, please contact Freeman Manufacturing immediately. To begin using the machine, let's examine some of the important parts and features. Vices on the Sidewinder 2 are easily interchangeable. To change vices, simply loosen the thumb screws and pull the two halves of the vise apart. Lift the vise straight up and off of the machine. Mount the new vise in the same way. Be sure the vices mate with the aluminum guide post prior to inserting a key in the vise. Both halves of the vise must be flush with the aluminum posts or damage to the table may result. The table has a guide lever that controls table movement. The lever moves the table both in and out and side to side. The left collet holds the guide. When changing guides, insert the guide into the collet and push it up all the way until it bottoms out. Tighten the Allen screw with a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. The right collet holds the cutter. We will cover aligning the cutter and guide in a few moments. At the top left side of the machine is the guide dial. The dial detents in the set position. The dial should be on set whenever you are aligning the cutter and guide. On the left side of the assembly is the guide lock knob. When engaged, the knob will hold the guide in a raised position used for duplicating a key. In the front of the machine is the cutter head clamp nut. When engaged, the clamp nut will hold the entire cutter head assembly in the cutting position. On the right side of the machine is the feed handle. The feed handle is used to raise and lower the cutter head assembly. The power switch is located to the right and behind the key vices. We recommend that you unplug the machine anytime you change cutters, vices, or guides to prevent inadvertently turning on the machine. In the front and to the right of the machine you will find the rod lock knobs. When engaged, the lock knobs turn the Sidewinder 2 into a code cutting machine. Engaging the knobs requires only screwing in the knob. In this example, we will prepare the machine to cut Volkswagen keys. The procedure is identical regardless of what type of key you are duplicating. This step does nothing except to align the cutter and guide to each other. Key type is irrelevant. This step must be done any time a cutter or guide is changed in the machine or if you change vices, for example, turning the vices over from side A to side B or installing a different set. Once this step is complete, you do not have to repeat it for each key you make. Insert two identical keys into the vices. Be sure the vices are on the same side. With the vice table all the way towards the user, insert the guide into the left collet until it bottoms out. For Volkswagen, we will use a 3mm cutter and guide. Tighten the Allen screw to secure the guide in place. Be sure that the depth adjusting knob is on set, the cutter head clamp nut is loosened, and the guide lock knob is loosened. Insert the cutter into the right collet, but do not tighten it. Slide the vice table under the cutter and guide so that the blank keys are positioned directly below the cutter and guide. Allow the cutter to drop down onto the surface of the key blank. Next, pull down on the spindle lever until the guide is completely compressed. There should be no up-down movement to the guide if it is fully compressed. While the guide is being compressed, you should be able to see the cutter being pushed up into its collet. 
With the spindle lever pulled down completely, tighten the cutter head clamp nut. This will hold the cutter head assembly in the lowered position and you can remove your hand from the spindle lever. Check the guide once again to make sure there is no up-down travel. Next, tighten the cutter with a 1 8 inch Allen wrench provided in the drawer. The cutter and guide are now calibrated properly to each other. There are two ways on the Sidewinder 2 to align keys, tip stop and shoulder stop. If the keys have a shoulder, such as BMW, Mercedes 4-Track, or Volkswagen, simply slide the key into the vise until the shoulder touches the edge of the vise and clamp the key. If the key has no shoulder, such as Honda, use the handheld tip stop holding it flat against the end of the vise. Slide the key up to the stop and clamp the vise. In either case, be sure that the vises are clear of key shavings and you'll hold the key flat in the vise. Before actually cutting the key, you must set the proper depth of cut for the particular key you are about to make. This is done without a key in the right side vise. Also, if you are cutting several copies of the same kind of key, you do not have to repeat this step for each key. We will be cutting a Volkswagen key in the next step, so a 3mm cutter and guide are being used in this example. Loosen the cutter head clamp nut, guide lock knob, and be sure the depth adjusting knob is indicating set. Insert the pattern key into the left vise and lock it into place. The key must be positioned flat in the vise. Position the cutout portion of the pattern key under the guide and pull down on the spindle lever until the guide contacts the key. Continue downward pressure until the guide shaft bottoms out and the downward movement of the spindle lever stops. Do not use excessive pressure. This step is critical. You must set the proper cut depth for this particular style of key. While maintaining pressure on the spindle lever, tighten the cutter head clamp nut to fix the cutting head of the machine into place. You can now relax pressure on the spindle lever. It should remain in the lower position. As a check, the cutter and guide should visually be at the same depth, and the guide should have no up-down travel to it. Also, the guide is pressing down on the pattern key, and smooth movement of the table would be difficult. This will be taken care of in the next two steps. Turn the depth adjusting knob to the 10 position. You should feel a detent at this position. This adds ten thousandths of clearance between the guide collet and depth screw. You will not see any movement of the guide in this step, however. Lift up on the guide until it stops. You should notice a very slight upward movement of the guide, which is ten thousandths of travel. Hold the guide in this position with your right hand and tighten the guide lock knob. This will hold the guide in the upper position. You should now be able to move the table back and forth without any resistance. Insert the blank to be cut into the right vise and tighten it into place. You are now ready to cut the key. Using proper cutting procedure will assure smooth cuts and cutter longevity. Determine what type of key you are cutting from the illustrations and follow the cut direction as shown. The 4-track type key is used on some Mercedes-Benz and BMW models, as well as the new Honda key. This type of key has cuts on the left and right side as the key is laying flat, as well as both the top and bottom side of the key. All keys in use today are the convenience type, which means that the cuts on the top and the bottom side of the key are the same. Cuts on the left and right side of the key, however, are different. The two-track key is the most common of the side milled keys. The bidding is along only one edge of the blade, either the left or the right when looking from the bow to the tip. The key is a convenience type having the same cuts on both sides of the key. Although spacing and depths may vary from one manufacturer to the next, the duplicating procedure is the same. If the bidding is on the right side, again, looking from bow to tip, begin at the shoulder or just before the first cut nearest the bow. If the bidding is on the left side, begin at the tip of the key and work toward the head of the key. The internal type key has cuts up the center of the key. Due to the smaller cutter size required, it is important to minimize cutter chatter and vibration as it will easily chip the teeth of the smaller cutter. Use a firm hand when beginning the cuts on this type of key and try to begin your cutting from an edge of the key that has no cuts as opposed to running the cutter into a cut portion with nothing to hold pressure against. When cutting this type of key, begin from the tip on the right side of the key. Feed along the right side from tip to bow, then reverse for the left side. We previously aligned the cutter and guide to each other, and we have the Volkswagen vices on the machine. We set the proper depth for the VW key earlier. Now it's time to actually cut the key. Insert the key blank in the right vise. Our pattern key we used to set the cut depth is already in the left vise. 
We are showing the duplicating procedure with both code rods installed in the machine. The rods do induce a slight drag on the carriage when duplicating. If you prefer a smoother motion, you can remove them when duplicating. With both pattern key and blank installed, we are ready to begin cutting the key. As discussed earlier, begin cutting the Volkswagen key at the right side tip and work the cutter up the right side of the key. Once you reach the bow of the key, move your pressure onto the left side of the key and work your way down toward the left tip. Once the first side has been cut, remove the key from the right vise. Be sure to remove any key shavings in the vise before you reinstall side 2. It's also a good idea to run a flat file over the surface of side 1 to remove any burrs that may be on the key. Repeat the cutting procedure for side 2. Once the key is cut, back the carriage out and remove the key. If you plan on cutting additional Volkswagen, Audi, or Porsche keys, you can leave the machine in this position. If you are done cutting Volkswagen type keys, put the machine back in the ready position by loosening the cutter head clamp nut in the front of the machine, loosen the guide lock knob on the left side of the machine, and return the dial to set. The Sidewinder 2 makes code cutting a high security key a simple procedure. Please note that care must be taken when code cutting as the user needs to plan ahead for the next cut at all times. The Sidewinder 2 replicates a laser type cut on the key when used properly as opposed to a plunge cut. Using a laser type cut removes the peaks in between cuts and assures a smoother working key. Never cut a key using a plunge cut on the Sidewinder 2. Doing so can result in a key that becomes stuck in a lock. We will cover code cutting both a Volkswagen and Honda key momentarily. If you purchase additional kits for the machine to cut other key types, please be sure to thoroughly read the instructions as each kit will have its own particulars to generate a key. All kits will come with a depth and space rod, as well as a setup key. The setup key is used for a variety of purposes. All setup keys are cut to number one depths along the entire key. The setup key will also have a deep cut in one position, listed in the instructions with the kit. If your depth or space rods ever require adjustment, the setup key will be used to realign the machine. The setup key is also used to set the proper cut depth for the key. Last, the setup key has the proper tip cuts that must be traced onto the key for proper operation. We suggest that you use the setup key to cut all number one cuts onto whatever type of key you intend to code cut and trace the tip cut onto the key as well. Use the duplicating procedure discussed earlier to prep your key blanks so they are ready when needed. You can also cut the tip cuts onto the key after the code cutting is done if you prefer. We discussed planning ahead for the next cut earlier. When cutting keys on the side one or two, you will always set the machine for the shallowest cut to start, position the key properly with the space rod, then cut your first depth. If your next cut is deeper than the one you just cut, you will always turn the space rod first, then turn to the deeper depth. If the next cut is shallower than the one you just cut, you will always turn the depth rod first, then turn to the next space. If this procedure is not followed on every cut, you will miscut a key. Let's cut a Volkswagen key to put this procedure into perspective. To start, we'll trace the number one cuts onto our blank, set the proper depth for the cut, and clear out our tip cuts. Insert the setup key into the left vise and set the cutter depth for duplicating as we covered earlier. Insert the blank into the right vise and copy the setup key onto the blank. Repeat this for both sides of the key. We now have a Volkswagen key with number one cuts on both sides and the proper tip cut. Remove the setup key from the machine. Next, we will engage the depth and space rods. Tighten both thumb screws completely, then back them off about one half turn. Rotate the depth and space rods until you feel each stop engage. When engaged properly, you will see and feel the carriage snap from one depth or space to the next. You may need to rotate the rod to get the stop to engage. Turn the depth rod to the shallowest depth, in this case a number one. The space rod has a detent in the key load position that is about one inch away from the cutter and guide. With the depth set for a number one cut, turn on the machine and turn the space cam to move the key into the cutter. With our number one cuts already made, the cutter should ride up the channel that we just cut with our setup key. We recommend using your left hand to help the carriage move into the cutter as you position it. It is normal to remove a small amount of material as the key goes towards the bow. Stop turning the space cam once you reach the first cut at the bow of the key. You may also wish to remove the feed handle from the machine when code cutting to minimize drag on the carriage. The cuts on our sample key will be 1, 2, 4, 4, 4, 2, 2, 1. The machine is now in the first position and we already have a number one cut on the key. Since our next cut is deeper, we will space to the second position and turn our depth rod to a number two cut. When turning the rods, use a smooth motion. Our third, fourth, and fifth cuts are all number four depths, which are deeper than our current cut. 
we will turn the space rod to the third position, then turn the death rod to a number four cut. Next, turn the space rod to the fourth, then fifth position to make three number four cuts in a row on the key. The sixth cut on the key is shallower, so we must turn the depth rod to a number two depth prior to spacing to our next position. If this is not done, we would move into the sixth position at a number four depth, rendering our key useless. With the depth set at a number two, turn the space rod to the sixth position. Our next cut is also a number two cut, so we will turn our space rod to the seventh position. Our last cut is a shallower number one cut, so we will turn the depth rod to a number one and then space over to make the last cut. Always run out the last cut on your key regardless of depth. If the last cut is a number one or a number four cut, turn the space cam until you reach the key loading position. This will assure smooth lock movement. Repeat this procedure for side two. Once the key is finished, you should visually inspect it. There should be no severe edges to any of the cuts that would allow a tumbler to become trapped in the key. And the tip cut must be proper. If any part of the key does not look correct, use a flat file to smooth the edges of the cut. Improperly cut keys, as mentioned before, can become trapped in a lock requiring replacement. Never force a key into a lock. Next we will originate a Honda key on the machine. We will need to change the code rods from Volkswagen to Honda. Changing the rods takes about one minute. Prior to changing rods, remove the Allen screws from the table with a 3 seconds Allen wrench. To change the spacing rod, pull the carriage forward and insert the wrench into the small hole in the lower table. You can find the correct position by looking into the hole and rotating the space rod. Once the hole is located, insert the wrench and unscrew the rod. Replace the rod with the Honda space rod and tighten. Move the carriage to the left until it stops and insert the Allen wrench into the small hole just in front of the vise. Again, rotating the depth rod until the wrench falls into the locked position. Unscrew the rod and replace it with the Honda depth rod. Once again, hand tightening. The Honda kit requires the use of the 532nds cutter and guide. Follow our earlier procedure to change the cutter and guide and align them properly. Use the setup key to adjust the proper depth of cut as discussed earlier. Use the handheld tip stop to align the key and turn the machine on. After engaging the depth and space rods, we will turn the depth rod to a number one depth on the right side and turn the space rod to the number one position at the head of the key. Our first depth is a number four, so we will need to rotate the depth rod to number four. Next, we will space to the next position and turn the depth rod to a number 5 cut. Our adjacent cut is a number 1 depth, so we must first turn the depth rod to number 1, then space to the third cut. Space again to the number 4 position. The next two cuts are number 3 depths. After the fifth cut is made, turn the depth rod to the number 1 position, then space to number 6, and back to the key loading position. To get to the right side cuts, loosen the depth thumb screw and push the carriage to the right. Re-engage the thumb screw. There is a connecting detent at the number one position. Cut the left side in the same manner as the right side with cuts of 3, 5, 6, 2, 5, 1. You can now turn the key over and repeat the procedure for side 2. If you feel you need to adjust your code rods, or any time you purchase an additional kit for the Sidewinder 2, adjust the machine by doing the following. In this case, we will show alignment procedure for the Honda depth and space rods. Insert the proper guide in the right collet. When adjusting the rods, always use the guide as opposed to the cutter to set up the machine. Insert the setup key into the right vise and tip stop it using the handheld tip stop. Bring the guide down into the cutout portion of the key and fully compress it. Lock the guide into place with the cutter head clamp nut. On the Honda setup key, the fourth space position has a number six cut. All other cuts are number one depths. 
All setup keys will typically have the deepest cut in the fourth position to assist in setting the spacing. Instructions with each kit will detail the actual depth of the cut and position if different from standard. Engage the depth rod by turning the thumb screw. Turn the rod to the number one depth position. Use the 3 seconds Allen wrench to loosen both Allen screws next to the knob. Insert a flat screwdriver into the end of the knob. Turning the screw on the end of the rod adjusts the left-right position of the guide. The goal is to move the guide so that it just makes contact with the edge of the key. It may be helpful to turn the machine on, which will make it easier to hear when contact is made. Once you have the rod positioned properly, tighten the two Allen screws. To adjust the spacing, engage the space rod by tightening the thumb screw. Rotate the space rod until the D10 engages the rod and turn the rod to the number 4 space position. Turn the depth rod to the deepest position, in this case a number 6. The goal is to center the guide in the cut by adjusting the cam as we did it with the depth rod. Turn the screwdriver until the guide is centered in the cut. Once you have the cut centered, tighten both Allen screws on the rod. The depth and space rods are designed so that you can remove them from the machine and reinstall them without the need to adjust them each time. If you have dial calipers, the adjustment can also be made by reviewing the depths and spaces, shown in generic code ME, and determining if your machine is cutting properly. We suggest that any time you originate a key on the Sidewinder 2 that you use only service keys to prevent the chance of miscutting an expensive transponder blank. Once you have originated the service key, duplicate it back onto the transponder key. The Sidewinder 2 includes Freeman's unmatched parts, labor, and freight warranty. The machine is fully covered for the first year, including freight to and from Freeman. If the key has no shoulder, such as Honda, use the handheld tip stop holding it flat against the end of the vise. Slide the key up to the stop and clamp the vise. 